All right, today's lecture, we're gonna talk about forming methods. And so this first module, we're gonna talk about uh, things that we can add uh, during the shaping or forming process and the effect that, that that has. All right, so let's just quickly go over um, a review of the entire ceramic processing uh, uh, process again. So we can start from raw ore, uh, and we have to somehow get that to our uh, pure ceramic of interest. Um, and then we're gonna do some powder processing, which we talked about in the previous lecture. And now today we're gonna talk about shaping or forming uh, so that we get it in the uh, approximate shape that we want. Um, and then in the next lecture, we're gonna talk about centering. Um, and then sometimes after centering, we may have to do some type of machining or finishing to get it uh, exactly the way we want. Okay, so uh, again, we might have to add things uh, to the powder uh, for our given application or forming or shaping uh, technique. And so these additives are things that we add to the powder uh, before uh, centering. Um, and the reason we do this uh, can be a number of reasons. Uh, one reason is if we are uh, shaping the powder uh, and we're compacting it, the powder compact, compact uh, as it's called, um, is quite fragile. Um, this is also said to be in the green state. So whenever I say green state, this means that it's been shaped, but it hasn't yet been centered. Um, so we can add additives like binders, which increase the green strength. So the strength of that green part, so that it's less fragile. Um, we can also add lubricants. This can decrease um, friction during uh, certain shaping methods and also uh, allow the powder to flow uh, and be more mobile uh, in the various applications. Okay, so these are kind of a summary of some of the various additives that we can add. So this should also be uh, somewhat of a review uh, for those of you in MSC 407. Um, but some of the things we can add are binders, um, again, this gives it green strength, so this helps uh, make it stronger. So if, the, if we have to handle or move uh, the part before it's been centered, uh, that we will have some strength and it won't um, fail or fracture before uh, it's, it's ready. Um, plasticizers. Um, certain types of forming methods that we're going to talk about have to have the powder in a more plastic, uh, pliable sort of... Um, be, have it have that more of that behavior. Uh, so think Play-Doh and, and things like that, more of a dough-like appearance. And so uh, certain applications will require these plasticizers. Um, also, we, we mentioned these lubricants. Uh, this lowers the particle-particle uh, friction uh, so that particles can flow. It also reduces the friction between the particles and the die wall if we're using some type of uh, container. Uh, and we also have uh, compaction aids. These are things that improve compaction. And basically, these are the same thing as lubricants. And so they kind of serve the same function, but lubricants can also allow something to be compacted. So if we're using some type of pressing technique, um, this allows for those particles to rearrange under that applied pressure. Okay, so binders. Uh, binders are typically low modulus materials, and you can think of them kind of as a glue. So let's imagine that we just have uh, alumina particles. So we have all these discrete particles. Um, if there's nothing in between those alumina particles, the only thing holding those particles together would be uh, very weak van der Waals forces. But instead, if we put a low modulus material in between uh, these particles, uh, that can add, act as kind of a bridge or film uh, coating these particles. And when we apply force, that can uh, move very easily and allow all of this to bind uh, more than it would if we just have simple van der Waals forces. So binders allow it to have this greater strength, uh, handle it more easily. So if you're on a, um, uh, if you're in a, you know, factory and you're making these parts, you want them to be easy to handle and, and move from one place to another.
Uh, they can also uh, increase the density of the part in its green state uh, as well as its final state. So here's uh, an example of a system, a binder system, uh, that's used. Um, so the example here is PVA, po uh, polyvinyl alcohol. Uh, that's our binder. And then we also have uh, PEG, or polyethylene glycol, uh, using uh, that as a plasticizer. So it basically the PEG modifies the properties of the PVA. And so what that does is the PVA is added to increase the improve the strength of the unfired uh, ceramic or green part. And then the plasticizer PEG uh, improves those properties by lowering the glass transition temperature of the PVA so that it will flow at lower and lower temperatures. And so that's kind of what this uh, graph here is showing. It's showing you the pressing temperature uh, versus density. So obviously the higher the density, uh, the better. And so you'll notice here that we have different amounts of PVA and PEG. And uh, the, the top one up here is when we have the highest force and the most amount of PEG, right? So the lowest amount of PVA. Uh, and so you can see there that it's also not affected as much by temperature uh, because it, it, it's already lowered uh, the TG of PVA, so it's low and it doesn't really affect by temperature, only very slightly. And the same thing for 80% as well, slightly lower density, um, but not as much affected by temperature. Whereas the ones down here um, that have uh, lower pressures uh, are more influenced by temperature. So you can see there's a basically a step in these two curves uh, indicating uh, a much greater uh, influence on temperature at the lower pressures. So basically this system gives us uh, higher density, higher strength as well. So those things uh, go together. Okay, so uh, lubricants, like I mentioned, um, can be added as well uh, for a number of reasons, but one of them uh, is to reduce the ejection force. So if we are using some type of dye, uh, we have to get our sample out of the dye. And so that's where a lot of um, cracks and flaws uh, in the process come in, is from the actual ejection. And so here, uh, we're kind of showing a schematic of this part uh, that's in this uh, uniaxial dry press rig, uh, and it has to be ejected uh, from that dye. And so the lubricant, if that is put on the dye walls, uh, can allow the part to be pushed out using lower forces, uh, and therefore it gives us, and it also gives us a more uh, even distribution of uh, pressure because it's not uh, influenced by the, the walls. So things that um, these lubricants uh, can be uh, are kind of listed here. Uh, steric acid, uh, waxes, uh, another sort of sterate material, zinc sterate. So these things can also uh, increase in those. And again, they're lubricants, but that's the same as compaction aids. So that also helps the, the density, as you can see down here. Okay, so again, there's a number of different materials that can be used. Um, to be a lubricant, you, uh, the primary uh, function here is that you wanna have low shear strength. So basically, you can easily shear the material. Uh, that way, it, it moves freely. Um, and so all of these materials have low shear strength, allowing them to, to form uh, under uh, this pressing and in, uh, aid in compaction. So powders, or the particles can flow more freely relative to themselves, but also the, the mold wall. So a lot of these are things like you might expect, expect uh, waxes, uh, talc, graphite, those are just uh, typically thought of as uh, dry lubricants anyway. So those types of things, but also a lot of sterates, as you see here, and some organic acids uh, and waxes. Okay, so with all of this, um, we've added, uh, so, we're gonna talk uh, in, in, a, in a bit about the different techniques for forming and shaping our ceramics. Um, but right now we've talked about all these things that we've potentially added to the ceramic before it's been shaped or formed. Um, but as you might imagine, all of these materials we don't necessarily want in our ceramic. 
And so uh, that's a problem. We need to get rid of them. And so when this is um, when these things are added, we typically also have to add additional steps when it comes to centering. And this is what we're going to talk about in the next lectures. Uh, but uh, in this case, we have to add additional steps to that to remove these additives. And so that's why, as you've kind of looked at all these materials, a lot of them have been organic in nature. And so they will decompose and they shouldn't leave behind uh, residue. So they should all essentially go to gas products. So if you center just kind of normally, those additives will de decompose and it can also, but it can result in contamination, uh, cracking if it's too, uh, um, uh, too sudden, or it can also uh, result in pores or bloating. Uh, and so that's, those are issues for, for ceramics. And so typically what we need to add is uh, a binder burn-off step. And that's what we have here. So this is showing the time versus temperature. So basically a centering program for a specific material. And so what we do is we add this very, very, very slow ramp to a low temperature. So around 500 degrees, which again is, is low temperature relative to the uh, isothermal hold up here. Um, so what this does is it very, very slowly heats it up and slowly thermally decomposes those additives and allows for them to slowly escape so that there's no cracking or bloating or uh, things left over so that there's no contamination. And so we typically do that whole, and then about 500. So at about 500, most of these organics will decompose. And so that's the idea uh, with that temperature. But this is added to remove these prior to our centering process.